Alright everyone, welcome back after three years to yet another episode of Examining the Witness. Um, today, we are going to be talking about the quarry area down here. <clears throat> um, I am going to go out on a limb and venture to guess that this is probably not your favorite area of the game. Uh, it's not my favorite area of the game because the, the mechanically it's a little bit weak and it's less thematically super essential than some of the other zones that we've gone through in previous episodes. Um, and uh, and also, for the longest time, I couldn't really figure out what it's about. But now I have a better idea of what it's about. Um, <clears throat> and we are going to walk through that today. Um, the quarry is an interesting zone. It is kind of a side, smaller zone. Um, it's all about the logic puzzles and this sort of syntax of the logic puzzles. It's sort of like a, a, a apotheosis of that where they can all come together. Um, it's also a transitional zone between the desert temple that, uh, that we talked about in the previous episode and the uh, kind of castle fortress over there, um, where, uh, as you'll recall, the, the desert temple sort of represents the, it's connected to the Feynman video about the importance of doubt and inquiry, um, and it's connected to the site of, the, it's, it's like where the island is like first coming out of the ground uh, with ancient geology and stuff, uh, and it was host to the first ancient civilization, the Witness, who were like a sun-worshipping culture. They had this kind of proto-religious instinct that represents like the kind of the search for truth and the, the human connection to the sort of fundamental mysteries of the universe. Um, <clears throat> the fortress, on the other hand, one of my favorite zones in the witness has has a couple things going on. Um, partly, it's about uh, like the the question of how to think about human behavior and free will and psychology. Um, <clears throat> it's also full of all these statues, and it's about all the social drama and how people are um, uh, kind of distracted by their worries about social class and how there's all these injustices in society that prevent people from living the good life. <clears throat> Um, and all kinds of kind of emotional irrationality and things. Um, so this area, as we'll explore as we go through it, is kind of a transition zone between those two things. It's about how the initial search for truth, like the kind of proto-religious urge, gets like distracted and corrupted and sort of morphed over time into things that are more practical and useful for society, um, but things that are less conducive for like a, a, a you know, the, the society of true searchers. Um, so anyways, we're going to go through here and explore all about that and learn about the quarry zone. Um, <clears throat> yes, also, uh, my wonderful wife uh, is joining me just like she did in the more now than ever video. She's going to occasionally ask some uh, questions and things like that. Yeah. Hello, I'm here. Nice. Um, so we're um... actually let me let me tell a little bit of a story here. <clears throat> I uh, when I played the witness, I insisted on solving entire areas before moving on, and I deliberately skipped pink trees because I'm just like that, I guess. And so I came over here, and this is I think one of the first puzzles where I actually kind of had to give up and turn uh, right. around, nice. like like ex excluding the one <clears throat> about the. Uh, the like the first uh, vault, which yeah. is an obvious yeah. example. This this also kind of tripped me up. But, yeah, but the quarry holds a special place in my heart. So. Yes, so so that's a good thing to bring up because we right off the bat, of course, we have this. This is common that we get gated off of um, the, um, you know, on the ability to understand the the tile mechanics. And so we see this area is gated by knowledge of the tiles. But very unusually, and the kind of thing that would force you to have to give up and go away to another zone, it's gated here by these uh, tetrominoes, which are from a totally different area of the game. Um, and uh, that is not something, especially right off the bat like that, um, is, is very strange. The witness tries to keep its areas totally modular, precisely so that you don't get like stuck and totally ab unable to complete the game just because you don't understand one puzzle mechanic. Um, but this quarry area um, mixes and matches all of the different uh, like logical puzzle syntax uh, uh, panels in the game 
um, but only the the logic one. So it's a, it's a unique area. It's sort of like the town, except the town mixes together everything. The quarry mixes only like the you know not the environmental based uh, mechanics. Um, but we will get back to that in a little bit when we get more into the puzzles. For now, I want to explore the environment around here. Um, so it is a quarry, right? They're like mining stuff, uh, or not mining stuff, but they're, they're carving these blocks out, all these bricks. And we have this uh, beautiful kind of ruins of a church here, which is kind of like half in, like a small part of it is like literally carved out of the limestone or whatever this is. Right, it backs up against the wall, like the yeah. stone itself. Well, and there's a bit of, there's, a, there's like a corridor that's like carved directly into the stone. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there, you know, and then obviously there are all these bricks being used to construct the church. Um, but nowadays, uh, it has been, the church has been torn down in parts. Uh, like maybe they're unstacking all these bricks or, you know, maybe it just collapsed. Um, <clears throat> and it's been replaced with this poured concrete, which also is uh, generated from the limestone, as we'll see inside. Um, <clears throat> and this uh uh, you know, so so it's, it's we've got two buildings on top of each other here, right? First it was a church, and then it was remade into a, like a modern industrial concrete factory. Because they're literally like replacing it and like rebuilding it differently. Yeah, yeah, and that ties into the themes of this area, which are it's about uh, the like societal. A lot of the witness has been about. I've probably repeated this ad nauseum in my earlier episodes, the first person conscious experience perspective of like the, 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 the way of trying to understand the world based on introspection and interrogating one's own experience um, versus the third person kind of hierarchical scientific knowledge, which is about connecting up lots of different pieces of evidence about the external world from a third person perspective. That's like a, a, a you know, that's what's going on in most of these other areas of the witness. Um, and people probably, like, on the internet or something are, like, with bad takes, simplifying that to, like, the witness is about science versus religion. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> no. It's about building a bridge between these two ways of knowing about the world, which are, like, so impossible. Well, it's like it's, Kuz's wall of paradise. It's about truth-seeking, and, like, those are natural parts of yes, truth-seeking. Yes. like, different <clears throat> ways towards the truth. But this quarry area really is more about science and religion not as personal ways of thinking and knowing about the world but about like as as real institutions in the real world which are like fallible which have like many problems um you know which are both uh annoying and difficult sometimes um so let's get into this concrete factory yeah. so and if then you you'll didn't see what I like mean. this area that's kind of intentional. <laughs> it's like not supposed I, to be like the, the best truth-seeking experience here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there you go. We're on yeah. the edge outside. Um, nice. Actually, this is funny because this is that same gating puzzle that we had, except we don't have to go and get the fourth uh, yeah, that's one. Well. It's <laughs> um, like identical. I don't really yeah. understand what's well, going on. Well, I think on. this is like a prelude to the, for, the uh, fact that we're gonna have the forgiveness tiles because like there's one missing. This I, I don't remember, but I'm, I'm I bet if we went over to the hexagon area, we might see or like I wonder if there's a puzzle that is like this, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, but like you know with some extra hexagons or something that makes it more. Um, uh, that's interesting. More difficult to get. I have to get all the yeah, now, now, though. <laughs> yes, unfortunately. So you, you called it the forgiveness. Yeah, like, simple. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know exactly what you're calling it. Yeah, so we get in here, just to, to uh, clarify, I mean, we have these statues, we see we've got these alcoves on the walls, so that's like a relic of when this was a church or a monastery, but then it's been filled with all this, like, pretty gnarly, like, old, rusted, heavy industrial equipment um, for, as far as I can tell, making the poured concrete. They're grinding up the limestone into this powder and then turning it into grit, which is going to be able to be used to make all these, like, modern, like, 
rebar reinforced concrete structures that you see like in the color bunker or elsewhere on the island. Um, so that's kind of part of the part of the lore here. You see the ceiling is like a you know like iron and beams and stuff. It's not that I imagine this originally would have had like a nice church vault. So anyways, here we are with these super old CRT looking panels um, and uh, representing not like a super attractive like sci-fi modernity, but this kind of like ugly, gritty, uh, <laughs> like, you know, version of like industrial society that's replacing the church here. Um, so we get this impossible, um, this, oh, this yeah. impossible puzzle that we can't Very solve because how, we can't pick up all the hexagons. Um, but uh, this little uh, symbol here is able to cancel out the unsatisfied remaining um, hexagon dot symbol. Um, and, uh, and we can conclude the puzzle actually I don't know. Um, We also realize that this uh, is acting as a control panel that is raising up uh, this... Uh, so dark in here which is pretty notable it's like totally abandoned right it's not like oh this used to be a church and now it's been torn down and now we have this like awesome concrete factory <laughs> <laughs> it's like the concrete factory also is irrelevant i mean everything on the island of the witness is abandoned but this is like particularly no, this is like shuttered. derelict it's yeah. extra derelict yeah. yeah um so that's kind of notable um we will waltz through here of course normally you'd be trying to get the hexagon but here and this is teaching you that uh there still are some rules this little um, trifoil icon has to be within the same region of the uh, icon that it is forgiving. have a trifoil which means now we have to find a way to skip one uh, how do we oh we move the whole thing yeah there you go no okay uh, okay right like yeah, this like yes that. yeah Strong contrast between uh, indoors and outdoors. Yeah, it's very dark in here, unlike most areas. It's dim and light. Um, let's see. I mean, we, got, we just gotta get to the audio log. There's a great audio log. I wanna <laughs> talk about the statues, yeah, I wanna talk about the, the shadows here, here, but it's all comes together in this one audio log, so. Uh, so we're gonna head over there. Um, and yeah, I guess we'll jump right into it. What is divine in man is elusive and impalpable, and he is easily tempted to embody it in a concrete form, a church, a country, a social system, a leader, so that he may realize it with less effort and serve it with more profit. Yet. The attempt to externalize the kingdom of heaven in a temporal shape must end in disaster. It cannot be created by charters or constitutions, nor established by arms. Those who seek for it alone will reach it together, and those who seek it in company will perish by themselves. Hugh Kingsmill, 1944. So... <clears throat> There's, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why I like this audio log. We're gonna have to break it down in parts, right? Um, so one thing about this is, uh, it's, oh, I never even realized this pun. What is divine in man is elusive and impalpable. He is easily tempted to embody it in a concrete form. Okay, sorry. The <laughs> whole <not>. thing is concrete. <laughs> See what you did there, Jonathan Blow. Um, but, um, but also, so, so people are, 
there's this there's this pursuit of truth that you can have this trying to you know uh, trying to explore and connect to things but people are tempted everywhere to perform a kind of substitution where they take the 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 thing that's really valuable and they kind of like this reminds me of uh this book called the denial of death by um oh man i'm still forgetting the the author um but um where the thesis of this book um is it was by a psychologist and he said that people have this terror of the fact that they will one day die but they respond to this terror by um, kind of going and, and trying to embody themselves, um, yeah, by Ernest, Ernst Becker, it's like a Pulitzer Prize winning book, which is rare for a psychology textbook. Um, and so, so people have this terror of death, and they respond to that by like wanting to participate in immortal projects, like if you're a pharaoh and you want to build the pyramids that'll last for thousands of years, or you're Shakespeare and you want to write the sonnet that is like immortalizing your words or you know you want to participate in like the great patriotic war to you know save your nation from the invaders or you know all these kinds of things or participate in political fights or social movements or engineering technological feats or like designing masterpiece video games um, and people will put their kind of energy into there's like this sublime character that these immortal projects have because it feels like you're contributing to something larger than yourself um, and the because people have that instinct for these kind of group efforts which is great and it produces a lot of good stuff but it's also kind of a distraction in that you don't want to mix up like you know reunifying you know your nation or something with like understanding the fundamental questions of of the world like those are just different things um, and uh, so what is divine a man is elusive and impalpable and he is easily attempted to embody it in a concrete form a church a country a social system a leader so that he may realize it with less effort and serve it with more profit right and both of these things here so the church that we're in is of course symbolic of there's like there's two churches on this island right can we even see it we're gonna go outside and check out that church. We're gonna have to put this down. No, <laughs> um, no. Uh, no. All right. We're, um, you know, there's there's a second, there's a whole second church out there, and that second church has three audio logs in it, which is a preposterous number of audio logs. It has the Richard Feynman one, where he's like, eh, the religion is not for me. It has the one that's like a quote from Saint Augustine about like the rapturous experience of, of heaven and of prayer, and then it has the one up in the tower about like. Uh, people stop their ears and say they cannot hear you they close their eyes and say they cannot find you so like why are there two churches in this game um, that always bothered me just like how it bothered me that there are two castles in this game until I realized that they're for totally different purposes the starting castle in the island is about I mean I already talked about this in the fortress episode the starting castle is like kind of a fantasy castle it's kind of a reference to breed it's like a, a, the garden of Eden um, you know versus the fortress here is like um uh, it's 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 got such big walls because it's kind of like a microcosm of the game it's like a mini model of the witness island inside the witness island and um, you know it's this big aggressive warlike fortress because it's about social uh, you know kind of social conflict and drama and all these things that the rest of the witness is kind of walling in all those things so similarly the church here represents not like religious experience like is represented in so many other audio logs all around but instead is about the, the the institution of like the church in the real world like the project of it um, the different branches things like that and similarly the concrete factory here is not representing like science as like the religious impulse that like Einstein has that like the the audio logs in the desert talk about it's not representing like scientific uh, inquiry as this like cutting edge super technology that's going to give us like portals and magical light bridges and stuff like in the mountain in the in the center of the island um, it's just like this dumb concrete factory like why is this concrete factory here it's here because you got to build the stuff like you know somebody's got to clean the toilets somebody's got to pour the concrete to make all the buildings um, and uh, so this is it's like a commercial area like they're shipping out all of this 
concrete around the island. Um, I mean, you know, we, we can talk about, about that a little bit later, but these, you know, this is like the mundane, the vision of kind of, of the, the concrete factory represents like modern industrial society just under like normal capitalism. Like people are just doing business, um, you know, they're paying the bills, they're not thinking about the bigger questions. It's, there's just all this equipment. It's just like people are just doing what they're profit motivated to do. And then the religious stuff here is like this kind of like there's not there's not all this light pouring in. Um, you know, the, this it's it's like this kind of dark forgotten place. This is like the 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 institution of religion as you know as like a physical building it's not about the experience yeah there's no life in here there's no stained glass there's there's no like actual like uh connection to what the religion is about it, it's just the kind of shell of it yeah yeah so um so that's what the kind of the church and the concrete factory represent here um it's not about like the first person awareness versus it's like about the institutions that are like the kind of fallible uh, you yeah. know, imperfect Which, kind of clear, correlates of those things in society. I, I wasn't able to pick up on this like at all for a really long time uh, was because there's like so much respect for science and so much respect for religion everywhere yes. else on the island. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And of course, Jonathan Lowe, you know, he's like, he's really huge on like the, the good versions of these things. Um, but this is sort of about like don't get distracted by the bad version or like don't throw in with like the big cause Don't get distracted by like the sort of like the profit motives of just like ordinary capitalist business yeah. Don't get That's like not real science. too That's tied not real to religion. like the dogmas yeah. of like we see uh, we'll talk about these statues later But we have these statues of these people that are reiterating like a, a, a Darwinian um, evolution here where over here we have like the crouching ape and then we have uh you know this guy who's like the hunched over if you could see the outline in the back it's sort of like a hunched over like you know ostropitheses um and then like a kind of uh you know neanderthal type running character and then finally the upright human um so this is like hearkening to the kind of like you know evolution versus creationism debates that you might see all over the internet and stuff and which it's is also just a recognizable <clears throat> reference to science at all like it's just like okay. yeah yeah so that that's that's another kind of like science the institution versus religion the institution not the most steel manned like sophisticated versions that we can learn the most no, from no. but sort of like the fallible broken you know wonky versions that we get in real life um <laughs> I sure. uh, want to mention that the, this is, as you notice, carved into the actual stone wall. Yes, behind. yeah, yeah, this yeah. This is not yeah, the, uh, yeah, the yeah. yeah, this is the old church. Yeah. Um, so, and I think that's even a little bit symbolic. So, like, we have the stone. The stone is like a natural formation. When we get up there, you know, there's, like, trees growing on it and stuff. It's, like, this beautiful rock form. I'm going to put down it this, is uh, out there. Uh, this staircase so we can get out of this place um, so uh, so there's like this this cool like natural rock formation here which is just the rock out of which a lot of the island has been carved including the the, the temple on the other side in the desert um, and a lot of the buildings in the town must have been made from this quarried stone um, and then you see this is like this kind of organic shape and, um, you know, and here it's been quarried into this, like, super squared off logical uh, thing, you know, because humans have, have gotten into it and we've started to do what we do, which is, like, systematize and trying to understand the world and, you know, have hierarchies and, um, you know, have things be at right angles, stuff like that. <laughs> um, and then in here, so I almost wonder if, like, the... I mean, part of this is because it's such a logic-based puzzle area that it's like this abstract realm of cubes and stuff. Um, but I also wonder if this is symbolic of like, this is like the the evidence of, this is like the, the natural experience of the world or like something. the real world. Sort of like the Zen area over here is like shady trees, super emphasis on just like the 
pure sensory experience of the natural world. And then you get like carved out of it the different efforts of humanity, right? Like people are like taking the materials of the natural world and they're like making stuff out of it. And we see all different stuff being made out of this limestone. We see the carving out of the limestone. We see the making the bricks out of which the church is made, the more modern attempt of like grinding it into the little powder and then pouring it in concrete. We also have the statues uh, being, you know, being carved out of the limestone um, and uh, all that kind of stuff. So, um, so anyways, I think there's, there's a lot of kind of interesting symbolism that I still don't fully understand about like things being like the way that the institutions are kind of being built out of the raw material of nature. Yeah, you know? I think that's, that seems to fit really well. Yeah. I, I think that's a good explanation. Yeah. But to get back to that audio log, we only got halfway through it. So um, he says we're attempting to embody th this, this elusive and impalpable essence in concrete forms of these institutions that we can serve with more profit. Yet the attempt to externalize the kingdom of heaven in temporal shape must end in disaster. This is classic, like British conservative um, talking. And one other thing that's that's different about this audio log compared to the audio log in the church in the town, those are about personal religious experience versus this is about the institutions. Those are also like the Saint Augustine quote is from like literally like the seventh century or something, and the other quotes on the island from like Nicholas of Cusa are about um, you know they're also from like the fifteen hundreds or roundabouts versus this this is a christian quote but it's from like 1944 um so this is you know a, a person who's writing about uh you know the waning days of christianity and who's who's living through this transition of um you know or the increasingly kind of secularizing modernizing world um so uh so anyway just Think about like C.S. Lewis or G.K. Chesterton. Don't imitate the eschaton. This is kind of what this guy is saying. Um, yet the attempt to externalize the kingdom of heaven in a temporal shape must end in disaster. It cannot be created by charters or constitutions, nor established by arms. Um, this I interpret as kind of the like like a pro. I would call it like a pro free speech message um, in a way, uh, in in kind of a nuanced way. So can't be established by charters and constitutions. This is like. There's a Feynman essay called, I think, On the Importance of Doubt in the Scientific Method. Um, and it talks about how doubt is this crucial ingredient because we can't, put to both science and to so many aspects of life, because we don't know the answer. We as a society have to have the humility to acknowledge that like we haven't solved all of these great questions of like what is the ultimate meaning of life like how do you live the good life you know um, like how should society be structured and organized um, what should people do with their lives what things are acceptable and what things are morally wrong you know we just don't have answers to final answers to any of these questions um, and um, so so we need to have the humility as a society and this like forms the basis for liberal democracy and stuff to say like we're going to give people freedom to pursue their own and this is like why freedom is value at all like if we knew what was the right answer then we could just make everyone do that <laughs> um and uh and, and that would be fine um but uh but instead you know we're in this position of uncertainty where you can't dictate the good life partly because we don't know what it is also because if you kind of like try and bayonet people into like you know converting to the true religion or something they're not really going to be able to convert right there's things that have to actually um come from the heart and be be driven by people's individual experience um so cannot be established by um you know by created by charters or constitutions nor established by arms because there's no you can't dictate the answers to these questions because we legitimately don't know them and we're just on this process of discovery um and uh and then finally he says, those who seek for it alone will reach it together, and those who seek it in company will perish by themselves. Um, which I think is referring to the fact that like, this is, it's a collaborative thing, this search for truth, and the witness is all about that. Um, like it has all of these messages about the civilizational project of like this collaborative building of understanding. Um, the big contrast from Raid, for instance, which is just about like one person's like zealous like enlightenment or bust quest um 
but even though it's this collective undertaking it's a collective undertaking that has to be gone about individually like you have to have your wits about you you have to use your best judgment to try and understand and balance all these things and ask the question like there's no royal road there's no like pre-paved path you can't just follow other people's advice at best you can like read some books that they wrote or like play the game that they made or something um but you know nobody can uh can can lead you to to the final answer because we don't have the final answer um and people who are like getting wrapped up in like big political fights over you know who's right is like that's yeah not like really like right. that's not yeah. the way people who are trying to embody these things in these kind of like fake alternative like substitute answers like well you know uh i'm you know i'm gonna just like go on a invasion campaign to like reunify all of the nations of my historic people so they're all part of one empire again you know and that might be like this rousing crusade and everyone like can join it um but those people uh, uh hugh kingsman is saying are gonna like end up perishing by themselves because in the end that's gonna be unsatisfying it's not going to take them to the yeah, destination straight from the path yeah, yeah versus ironically the people like the people in all these audio logs some like christian religious from the middle ages some like zen masters some like scientists some philosophers all these different people um that are that are participating in kind of like the society of true searchers right that are like the star characters the witness um those people are gonna they're finding their way closer to truth, even though they're all coming from different directions. Um, so, so anyways, that audio log really sums up the themes of this area um, and is a powerful explanation of what's going on here. Um, so some more like backing for that, I guess. Um, here we have one of the many famous like witness illusions. Um, we have some like uh, uh, carved doves up there um, and um, with this shadow here, we have like angel wings on our character. Um, and then over here, uh, we have a, a scepter and a crown, right? And a lot of people are like, oh, this is like good versus evil. This is like a demon king or something. But I'm like, there's nothing demonic about it. There's no, no, this There's not a king. tail. There's not horns. It's a king, right? It's like, this is about the audio log quote. Like, you can't establish by charters and constitutions. You can't embody what is divine in man in these temporal things that are easier to serve and more lucrative to serve. Um, you know, it's like you can have a choice. You can be either like doing the spiritual search for truth, as tacky as those wings are, <laughs> um, or you can be like you know doing the the worldly power and influence and all of the kind of denial of death style uh, quests that you might. Uh, you know that you might try and go out and find but those are different things and you can't have them both because uh, you know it's, it's got to be an individual search for truth I also have a, a little bit of feeling about those shadows where I think like oh it's like a ruler of heaven and a ruler of earth uh, symbology going on which maybe is kind of playing into this, uh, this like changing of the rules mechanic here being like no, not necessarily those ways, but like forging a different way away from the predetermined kings and angels and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, uh, put the green on yeah, the slide by itself. Oh, sorry. Okay, sure. Um, so this is here we got. Um, black and white tiles again, except the tiles are actually not black and white, they're green and red, which is an unusual choice. Um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, I think that the choice of green and red is, if this was all, you know, the black and white tiles symbolize that first person conscious awareness versus, um, uh, versus kind of scientific uh, third person, like, you know, empirical inquiry. Um, so I think this was chosen a different color palette, maybe because it's otherwise just so monotone in here. Um, but also I think because the, uh, to distinguish that like this area, I mean, the green and red seems like very um, good and evil to me personally. Um, you know, it seems like stoplight colors and um, uh, and then particularly to have this kind of the, the imperfection note 
as part of it. I, I don't know, that, that you're not separating them is kind of, you're not actually separating them totally. You're, you're sort of um, drawing this, um, you're getting a little bit of them uh, mixed together. And um, I, I think that maybe, so the green and red recalls sort of like the Christian morality of like, you know, sin and goodness and good and evil. Um, rather than the, the other more like subtle philosophical dualities elsewhere on the witness. Um, <clears throat> I also wonder, the green, this kind of, it, it isn't like street green, and these are like glowing panels. They're not like paint swabs, so this is not like colored tiles from the color zone. Um, and um, I think this, this sort of teal green shows up in some of the like important areas of the witness around like unification and like sort of some of the most like sacred or central puzzles in the game have this teal green in the theater area and we can put these on screen in the video in the theater area in like uh the the vault puzzles for the burke video and the tarkovsky video um in the um i don't know in a couple different places they show up and so it's like a nice kind of color um that seems to be associated with like the good um uh, the good thing, in fact, these these uh, environmental puzzles that are right here, I won't be able to complete this, but um, that glows with that same same green. Um, and uh, so I wonder if this is, you know, the green is sort of like the, not just good in a Christian sense, but like the, the, the good searching of the society of true searchers, the stuff that the light is coming in from outside, right? It's the outside world that has like the, and the light that's associated with like the, true individual searching and then this it, we're in this sort of like dark place of the kind of corrupt and distracted real world institutions that are like interfering with that quest okay okay um, i didn't i didn't so that's maybe that the duality of these colors, colors before but actually now that you put it out all of the cement mixing stuff is green all of the like everything else like the the consoles and things are this kind of orangey red color the same as this so this whole area is like basically like the the kind of white of the quarry stone and then only green and this orangey red color so that that seems like something is really going on there yeah uh um, do you have any idea how to yeah solve this i think i do actually know how to solve this puzzle. let me let me give it a try so i believe that we Actually, you can get it with just the red shapes here. Okay. Perfect. Um, yeah, so anyway, so there's a little bit of color symbolism, although then it just introduces some other random colors, so <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just fun colors and like distinguishing itself as like this isn't the, um, uh, this isn't the... Not just black and white. Yeah, not the black and white tiles. Yeah. A lot of these are multiple solutions, yeah, I think. Um, so, so this this little trifoil icon is is interesting. First of all, like there's no real reason for it's just an arbitrary shape. It's like the most arbitrary shape in the witness, <laughs> you know, um, of all the panel thing. I mean, you know, there's the dots that have to be collected, the tiles, yeah, the stars are pretty weird, um, and then this trifoil thing is pretty weird. The fact that it's three reminds me of like the Christian Trinity, and also like. Um, yeah, I don't know. So that, that feels sort of like explicitly Christian about it in a weird way. It also kind of looks like a cross, but you know, it's only three. Um, and um, uh, it also, I mean, so it has this theme of kind of like forgiveness and fallibility. Like you can have these situations that would be impossible, um, except that they, um, you know, they're, they're made doable by... Uh, by the simple, so there's a little, there's kind of an aspect of uh, forgiveness to that, um, and um, partially the forgiveness and fallibility aspect ties into the fact that this whole area is themed around these like fallible human institutions, um, whether that's like kind of industrial, modern, like 
distracted, not thinking about the big questions, capitalistic society, or the kind of like overly dogmatic and you know behind the times on like you know scientific understanding of the world, like old school Christianity. Um, but um, I don't know. Science can be dogmatic too. I think it's dogmatic. Yeah, on both sides. sure, sure. Yeah. No, no. I mean, this is definitely kind of like a pox on both your houses area. But I just mean like the mechanic of like. The fallibility and the imperfection kind of yeah. applies to that. And, and hence the, like, replacement style building, too. It's, like, changing from old, non-working things to newer, also not working yeah, things. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think also this is... So we'll talk about the statues really soon. Um, these statues are, like, more statue <laughs> than all the <laughs> other statues on Windows because they have... Okay. They're on little plinths and stuff, and the textures are different. They're like covered in like dust and stuff. You know, the other ones look like people who've just been frozen in gray stone versus this is like splotchy and stuff. It, it's like, they're more statue-y than the, than the other ones. Um, and um, I think that implies these guys were here before. Like they're here longer as opposed to the other statues. I don't know. I, I think the lore explanation is like, well, it's solid gray stone underneath, but there's so much dust and stuff going around here. You know, like the, these were like shiny a long time ago, but then they put the concrete factory here and then there's like <laughs> okay. dust and soot and stuff. So they, yeah. But I think a, another effect of them being like more explicitly like carved statues is like it's famously hard to carve statues because you're you're carving away in this negative space i think that also kind of ties into the puzzles a little bit because there's like things being deleted like chipped away um so the uh, this like statue workshop like the, you have to carve into the stone but then if you carve too much and you like accidentally make too much of a chip into his shoulder or something then you're just screwed, right? You can't like glue the stone no, back in there. That, no. So there's famously like no undoes, no forgiveness, um, and a good sculpture is like a famously unforgiving medium to work in, um, and to such an extent that uh, the fra the word sincerely, this is a crazy fact, comes from the Latin phrase sans sera, which Whoa. means without wax, because sculptures, oh. when you screw up like that. What you do is you take your, you'd have your marble with your like chink in it, and you'd want to like fix the chink, and so you'd find some marble-colored piece of white wax and you'd uh, put the wax what? in there, yeah, to like just fill it wow. in, you know. Yeah. And so Sansara was like a mark of quality. Like this is really authentic. Wow. Like I really mean not it. Not a single. Yeah, mistake. no mistakes. Yeah. And so sincerely coming from that phrase sansera right. means like this is my this true is intention i'm not you know the no typos or anything yeah. like that yeah um, so anyway so i think that also ties into the the themes of um, kind of fallibility and perfection and personally it's sort of uh i mean it's also kind of funny that it's like the weakest mechanic of all the logic puzzles in my opinion i didn't enjoy these puzzles that much oh, um, come on it's like a meta but, mechanic i like it yeah it's kind of nice um but it also Personally, it kind of takes some of the edge off of the sort of extreme level of like master PC, like super perfection and kind of coldly distant abstraction that some of the rest of the puzzles can have in the yeah. witness. Yeah. Like everything, all the puzzles are so well designed and stuff. And it's kind of like, wow, like I'm just like overwhelmed by this amazing mandala of ideas and themes and stuff. And so this is kind of a nod to like, humans are very imperfect and fallible like that is okay religion will forgive you society will forgive you like it's all right uh you know it doesn't have to be perfect all the time even though we're aspiring to this great you know abstract and, and absolute things uh, so that's kind of how i read the symbolism of the mechanic So we have these, these two are kind of concluding the main puzzles of this area. I think this goes up and puzzles uh, or completes the, um, the lantern laser box uh, outside um, versus uh, this guy, which notably features the original black and white tiles, mm. um, goes and uh, sort of disappointingly just powers the elevator up and down out there. 
Uh, but this is kind of a callback to that original vault puzzle, I feel like. In fact, this is the original vault puzzle. Yeah, it is the exact original vault puzzle. No uh, way. Except oh, yeah. you have to now skip. It might be the same thing with like no other symbols changed. Um, and then you just have to find a way through all these, which would take me much longer if I was not using the power of cheats. Um, wait a second. Yeah, that didn't even work. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, we gotta come up here. Oh, yeah, now you can keep those. Both. Like, yeah, yeah, now you can go around. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, that's interesting. There's that green color that I was talking about as being kind of representing the, like, union of opposites uh, showing up in the theater and stuff. It's also the green color that you get when you mix the symmetry area colors of, like, yellow mm, and blue. Yeah, I was thinking that. You get that same teal green. Um, Alright, so that. Zone. Oh, let's complete those beautiful environmental puzzles. Um, so, here, you notice this is like the light that's pouring in to this zone. Got that same green color, um, and <clears throat> it's, it's coming in from the outside world. So this is sort of like, in this kind of dark place of fallible human institutions, like, there is real light, and it's like, the good stuff comes from the outside world, right? This is this pure religious impulse that people still have. Like, it's still here in this church. Um, and, um, you know, and yet, uh, it's, like, yeah, so that's like the impulse that people, are, that, that causes people to build all these things. But just because of the way that society works and the way that incentives add up, um, things become distracted over time and, you know, we're tempted to, Body, what is divine a man and something temporal which we can serve more easily and more properly. Um, but this is the same, you know, all, this kind of sunlight based puzzle. You don't see that much elsewhere in the witness, um, but you see it in the desert area for sure. And some of the other, like, most important puzzles in the game are, like, based on either the sun itself or, like, reflections of the sun or things like that. Um, so this is kind of like a really direct call to like that you know reflection of truth that's coming in from uh from the outside world <clears throat> and interestingly again kind of mirroring the, the sort of like dual perspectives of the the science and um and religion here here we have the environmental puzzles carrying the the kind of like sun worship uh you know sort of like plato form of the good uh energy in through this kind of heavy industrial shutters and then on the other side um, we have these like eyes of God also uh, looking down at us sort of judgmentally like uh, like the you know the Christian um, uh, you know the kind of dogmatic like uh, wanting to have a God so that you'll follow the rules even when no one else is around um, but also this is like light streaming into the building um, so it's uh, it's good stuff um, we also have beneath we have this kind of hierarchy right we have the christian god way up here on the roof and then we have this alleyway with the control center which is like where the the corporate bosses would be <laughs> right like watching, right, over, watching the over the workers down on the yeah. on the assembly line um so that's kind of fun yeah. um oh it's about to leave we haven't talked about these statues important and these statues are important i think because so here we can see the neanderthal the crouching over guy here we can get a better outline of like the half erect you know uh you know kind of homo erectus type uh type dude jogging through and then we have this confident upright homo sapiens um but um but the stat which is kind of a dig at religion for like being rigid and not accepting science you know being kind of behind the times um a sort of like juvenile dig that you wouldn't find elsewhere because <laughs> elsewhere we're talking about the like deep respect that jonathan blow has for the like these true religious thinkers who were like interrogating their experience, um, but here it's just talking about the institutions, um, and um, the statues though tell this different story and, and a much a more um, kind of spiritual story. Um, so we have this guy um, who first he's, he's got all this hair. The statues have less and less hair as they go along, which I feel like is another reference to the um, the um, like the chimpanzee thing, um, but. Um, you know, he's crouched, he's like fearful, um, he's defensive, and he's clutching this dove very closely to him, right? Um, the dove, I think, symbolizing like freedom, like 
purity uh, kind of like a connection to the spirit right like the dove in christian symbology is the the holy ghost and all that um which i never quite understood the doctrine of the holy ghost but as far as i can tell it's it's close to this sort of witness-esque thing it's like the holy ghost goes into you and it's the thing that animates your own spirit and gives you a divine connection to god it's not like a character it's sort of more like christianity's version of like atman or like a life force you know um that is like the mystery of conscious experience and the reality of the universe and stuff like that so anyways um so he's like clutching it really closely and doesn't want to let it go and the dove probably like wants to beeline out of there right <laughs> uh, as, as you could imagine it not their choice. but then up here in the second uh image he's like looking at it, he kind of, he's looking at it now kind of with amazement rather than like jealous you know fearfulness um he's like really realizing like wow like i have this stuff you know it's so beautiful and stuff um and he's still clutching it um, but only with one hand now and not against his chest. He's like giving it a little bit more leeway. Um, and then the next statue, of course these have been moved all over the place by the, the concrete factory who didn't care that much about all this religious paraphernalia. Um, so this guy, uh, you know, standing prouder and more erect, he's, he's moving now. This guy's like crouched on the ground. This guy is like standing, like kind of in the process of getting yeah. up. This guy is like starting to walk now and looking forward. He's not looking at the dove anymore. And the dove, he's not holding the dove. The dove is spreading its wings. Um, like, oh, like it might fly away, but it's still with him, you know? Like, mm -hmm. so he's more, uh, more confident, less like jealous and, um, you know, and protective of it. Um, and uh, there's more openness. Um, and then, of course, finally, we have uh, our sort of like most confident-looking guy. Unfortunately, in the in the darkest part of the building, um, but he's uh, you know this is like the most optimistic. He's got like the Superman hairstyle. He's like total excellent posture, and he's looking ahead with like he's got like the archaic smile or something. You know, he's like gazing confidently into the distance, not just like looking like I'm walking, but like you know, I have a goal and a mission and stuff. Um, and this dove is perched right here on his shoulder. He's truly become friends with the dove rather than like owning it and jealously guarding it. Um, so again, the, the, the question is all like, what does the dove symbolize? Um, and I think it's, it's like kind of, it's spirituality. It's like his connection to what is divine in man. It's, um, it's, it's the, I think this series of statues is the witness saying that you've got to go, you've got to look at these things, um, like you have to have an attitude of freedom and openness mm -hmm. and holding things lightly and being open to new ideas, right? Like he, he's not like afraid of losing his faith, right? It's the very fact that he like opened himself to the possibility of changing his mind into new information and to going to new places. It's that very active openness and surrender that allows him to coexist with this dove as like equals and friends who really, you know, appreciate each other and are, are have 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 faith in each other. Versus this guy, he's like closed off. He's so, you know, protective of this thing that he can't really have it. Right? Like it's trying right. to escape even as he's trying to protect it. I think we see this with like uh, dogma or like discoveries mm. that become like secret truths that like only the most powerful can know or like hiding away from the world and then later uh hopefully we're moving towards a society where like truth is just available and it's just yeah like, something that people partake in by choice as opposed to being like forced to follow or something yeah i mean i think it's interesting because the, the shadows here are this iconic like the you know the ascent of man image that's about Pers it's like a dig against religion. It's also about the civilizational improvement of, I mean, you know, really biological improvement of humans, but like it's kind of about humanity as a whole, as a culture, as a civilization, as a species, having this upward trajectory versus the statues are more about a personal journey, right? They're about like what one person should go through in order to have the right attitude in life. Um, I want to know 
also, I, I don't know why I find this interesting. The guy over here, he's like, like th this is like concrete powder. No, the, the guy walking out there, yeah. So there's concrete powder and there's <coughs> these blocks. And he's stepping out of both, I would say. And then the guy after him is in like the original <coughs> rock that has been carved away. So I, yeah, I kind of feel yeah. like it's away from those things. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I think part of this is just to give you the right... Like, yeah, the these outline, shapes yeah. look really closely like the chimp and Neanderthal, so they, they give you that outline, but yeah, there's... Um, yeah. I don't know, yeah. I don't know if that's a real observation or not, but... So anyways, this is unassuming little quarry zone, but it packs a lot of meaning into an audio log and a couple of statues. Yeah, and I really do think, like, the truth is this light beaming from outside... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's another message. It's like you're not gonna find the truth like inside this building where they're either like telling the you rules, the chemical the formula for pouring concrete no, no, no. or telling you like these outdated religious doctrines about evolution no. and stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's like direct perception it's, outside the real world. That's where truth is. Yeah, it's like you gotta have your eyes open and be like looking forward with an attitude of openness, and that's how you'll get the faith that you know and like get the. Uh, you know the kind the of inspiration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of spiritual connection that the game is uh, interested in. Um, so, um, so there's that. Then we open up into this this rooftop area up here, um, and um, there's a couple of nice things. It's always nice to get onto the roofs of buildings. <laughs> the witness is always frustrating when you can't. Um, there's a few beautiful environmental puzzles here. Um, also. Um, Oh, this one's kind of nice blue, like the blue of the sky or the ocean. Um, and um, there's a clever one over here, also in like the light and shadow, right? Um, of, uh, uh, oh, the um, Yeah, I'm trying to find up that obelisk. So we have the tree up there, of course, we'll cover that in a different episode. The tree is even harder to figure out than this area, um, but there's, uh, there's a couple different perspectives on it, you might say, um, and we will try and explore those. Um, but first we've got to cover the rest of the quarry area because it's, yeah, uh, it's split in two. There's these two um, different zones. Um, we have over here what used to be a quarry and a church and is now a concrete factory. Um, and over there we have a sawmill, which is taking uh, logs from here and uh, transforming them into the wood of that building. Uh, I'll take this down. We can uh, participate in one of the most uh, kind of cutest and uh, cleverest environmental puzzles here. Um, which relies on this moving platform I, where... <laughs> I definitely <laughs> ran up and down and up and down, being like, where can I get this? And finally I was like, yeah. wait, like, what if on the elevator? <laughs> yeah, so you can't click it from down below because that open uh, flap down there prevents you from seeing it, but then as you come down, the, uh, the changing perspective and the kind of foreshortening of all the railroad ties allows you to click one by one and, uh, you know, come down closer and closer. Um, until you're able to complete the puzzle. It's a cool puzzle, but it also feels kind of strange that it's not, like, it, it's not one of those ones where it's, like, on screen all at once. It's, yes, you it's can funny. never get it. Well, there's, yeah. uh, there's a variety of puzzles that you have to complete when, you, when you're taking the boat or something, so you got to think, like, what is the true shape of this environmental puzzle? It'd be, like, projecting the screen as you're moving. You know, it'd uh, probably have kind of a curved shape of some sort. Um, but uh, but anyway, not as not as thematically important as the ones in here. Just like an awesome little mechanic. Um, although this dock is more, if you'll indulge more of me thinking about like, no, like what it. is the history of the economics of the <laughs> island. Um, so this is like for shipping out. Like they're they're creating all these heavy blocks and stuff, and you don't want to have to lug that overland, right? So you you get that on. Uh, you, let's examine how exactly this works, right? So this industrial stuff, you're like mixing up the concrete. There's some sort of like furnace in there where you're maybe burning. I don't know exactly how this I works. I think you're throwing it into the big bin. The big bin like is shaking it and like yeah, it maybe through. it's shaking it by size. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's definitely mm. a grate over there that's doing yeah. that if you were up top. Anyway, so then we're loading all of the concrete mix into here, and then this guy can get shuffled right out here and then taken aboard some ship 
Um, uh. And then the ship can carry it to the other parts of the island for ease of construction, right? So, like, the town has a similar dock just like this. So you could take it around the long ways and then build all those buildings would, in the town. Would you look at that? Um, with the bricks. There's some rock that's fallen on the tracks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're blocking. And that's, like, natural rock that has fallen down. That's yeah, well, that's just part of the decrepitness of this whole uh, I don't know, but think about zone. the water over there. I feel, like, I feel like, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of theories that you put together here. Um, so, um, so anyways, here we have the sawmill zone, um, and this is playing a similar role. There's not as much like rich detail as the you know kind of Christian world of the Middle Ages versus the kind of industrial, scientific, secular world of the modern day. Um, but of course the shady trees area is themed all around um, like Buddhism and Zen and uh, meditation um, and so it also has the, the it's kind of like the you know this religious tradition um, is uh, you know with all these kind of like references to, to nature and um, the forest and everything um, and it's being harvested here and chopped up into these blocks and so this is the same like very business-like area of the witness, right? Like there's no real philosophy being done here. Even that audio log, which I love so much, is sort of, which is telling people like, hey, don't get involved in political fights and distractions and things. Like you wanna be focused on the true questions, like the big philosophical questions that are eternal and the things that are like essential to our existence in the universe. Um, but even that is kind of a criticizing audio log complaining about the institutions and the charters and the armies and things um and so this whole area of the witness is kind of like not participating in the big questions right it's not trying to use either the bridge of the first person conscious awareness or the third person scientific inquiry it's kind of just complaining about the fallible human institutions <laughs> that get in the way of all that um and um and that i think is one of the that's the reason why this is like logic puzzle party zone um and uh because it, it kind of represents this businessy like just um sticking to the legible like the the, the known quantities not on the cutting edge of anything right um, not forging discover new truths but just like just doing the normal stuff yeah yeah so we'll see in this sawmill zone uh in contrast to the environmental puzzles of the shady area it's like logic puzzle paradise, right? So here, after, and this is a this is kind of a disappointment. You might complete this whole area, and be like so psyched to unlock the lantern and all that, and come down here and realize that like, oh wait, like what the hell are these? You know, um, because there's stars here and there's additional tetrominoes now, um, and uh, so all all of the um, of the logic puzzles are are here um right so this area is extra gated it's yes like extra gated um <laughs> and there's um i don't know there's just uh like this is interesting because none, none of the other areas on the island have a combination of puzzle mechanics like this with the exception of the town which is explicitly about like tying everything together from all the parts of the island it's sort of like a completionist very clear cherry on yeah, top it's about that <clears throat> yeah versus this area is like a completionist cherry on top, but just for the syntax puzzles, just for the things that show up on the panel, and you don't have to be looking at anything else in order to understand how to complete this area. So if you if you go to the, right. the no tree houses no and the marsh, trees. then you get this lantern as kind of a bonus on top of that. Um, and there's, there's a couple reasons for that. First, I think, honestly, the mechanic of like the, the, the fallibility forgiveness icon is just a little weak. And if it was just the mechanic of that plus the hexagons and the tiles, I think like it, you know, it wouldn't have the same richness as some of the other uh, logic zones in the witness, like the Tetromino Marsh. Um, so I think you kind of had to combine it in order to make it, you know, to kind of bulk it out sufficiently as a nice area. Um, but I also um, the. Uh, you know the fact that it's all logic puzzles represents 
some of the criticism that this game is making of society that like hey we've abdicated on some of the big questions and maybe we focus on the things that are easiest to quantify right like easiest how come to talk logic about. puzzles are so superior and looked up to but like what about color puzzles? yeah what this, about light puzzles so this yeah. is if you'll forgive the expression like arguably the most autistic area of the witness right because it's just focused on like the legible rules and stuff like that and the 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 stuff that's going on here is this crucial this is also probably like the highest gdp area of the witness right this is the only the <laughs> no, only part no, of the no, town no. that is actually doing anything. i mean aside from like the scientific zone which is probably going to like create a nuclear weapon and destroy the island or something um in addition to whatever right. the made, color book you know. is not I mean, I guess they're producing yeah, flowers they're and peppers. Yeah, they bell peppers, but, <laughs> but it's like an experimental lab. These people are just the only people with, like, normal jobs on the island, right? Um, so this is, like, the fact that it's all logic puzzles is is playing into that theme of, like, the mundanities of the societal institutions, which might pay lip service to being about some greater cause, but really they're just kind of driven by incentives of power and profit and, you know, ordinary things like that. Mm-hmm. Um all right. So, um, oh, another thing that I just uh, thought about was a kind of interesting symbolism. And we have this river here. We'll talk a lot more about the river later in its entirety. But um, this was clearly supposed to be channeled. They poured this dam out of the concrete that they milled here, right, to kind of control what starts out as like this, this like magic, passionate river of like the source energies of like the the, the you know the magic mountain and stuff like connected to all of these deep themes of consciousness um and then it comes down here and kind of mellows out and connects to everything in the town and it's like oh we're just going to explore and connect to lots of different ideas more dilettante less like fundamental energy of the source bursting forth in a miraculous uh font um and then it gets even more tamed by this concrete that was poured here by these kind of like workaday folks in this area um and put to some useful purposes. So it's kind of saved up there by that dam um, and was clearly uh, originally intended to flow down here right. and carry the logs. So they could like chop logs here or something and then they could flow down to the sawmill, just like you know what happens in like Oregon and other real logging places. They float the logs down the river right. um, and then they can process them and stuff. Um, but the- You can see them even buried in the mud. So. Yes, but the river, um, because water is kind of just like in Tarkovsky movies associated with magic and sort of vital energy and mystery in The Witness in a game that doesn't uh, This is a weird phrase, but The Witness kind of doesn't like mystery, right? It likes clarity It wants to be as clear as possible about the big things the water as we'll mention in later episodes more about the mysterious endings and stuff um, is associated with like mystery and magic and um, kind of the, the, the romance and the 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 things that we don't quite understand. Okay. So the river we, refuses to be tamed, so it yeah. kind of branches off and, and does its own thing um, yeah. and goes back to a natural, you know, multi-path exploration of the world rather than submitting to kind of total logicalization yeah. of everything. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's just pure, like, water is the natural world. It's, like, the actual true reality of stuff. Um, and then, like, all of these impositions and channeling and such forth are artificial and ultimately not real they break down yeah another big phenomenon of the logic puzzles is like there's mechanisms <laughs> like, yeah we're raising stuff it's here exciting in the tree <laughs> houses you're like unfolding these panels mm. panel walkways that you literally walk on on the marsh of course you're like moving stuff over the marsh um so we're getting all of this um uh kind of <laughs> you just like I'm once again stumped. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, okay. Of course, the four isn't gonna work because it's too long. So that's like a guaranteed match for this. Yeah. Um, and we can just embody two and make the other one three. Here we have two fours, but we can't put them both in because they would interfere with each other. And you also have um, to cancel one of them because of the so rule with that guy. Yeah, maybe we'll just go with this row. Right, of um, course, you can just do yeah. one, yeah. Um, here, I think we might have too many dots to <laughs> to fill the whole thing. We could go with this, but then we wouldn't no, be... No, you uh, gotta cancel so we, uh, Well, this is funny. So this, by default, just works. 
so they're all satisfied right. and then, oh lord okay so the, <laughs> wow. they really don't want to <laughs> um, all right so how's this gonna go um maybe we can break the oh we'll just have to draw it okay we gotta draw it like this so that it's broken Let's see oh the opposite now yeah. this one doesn't work That's yeah even though it's perfectly yeah. possible to solve now um and here this took me forever but i happen to remember that the solution involves saving these two <laughs> Just a little bit of trauma as well. There are those saws that are cutting this nice big solid chunk of tree into little slices. Um, and then it like shaves off. I, yeah, I think this I think. is like shaving them Solid into shape. a standard size yeah. uh, vertically. Here we got some more mechanisms. Gotta bring this over. Uh, yeah, all the way. Yeah. Like that. I think yeah. that's good. Oh. Oh. Use. Oops. I'm done. Nice. Ew. I'm gonna ride this baby. <laughs> yeah. Action in the witness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's it's logic town, you know, and that's why the, the the glory is all squared off. Why it's so monochrome, it's just white. Um, even among, I mean, it's, it's kind of black and white, but then even among the black and white tiles, I've often wondered, like, can I assign a specific, like, clearly the black and white is about the first person conscious versus the scientist, like, those two ways of viewing the world, um, as revealed by the, the, the poly audio log right behind that tutorial zone. Um, but I wonder... I tend to think that the white tiles are more like the scientific hierarchical style of thinking because it's like the sunlight streaming down, illuminating things, but also like bouncing around, creating a lot of precise geometry. It has that clarity that I've been talking about. It's like the peak of the, you know, these these high places. Um, it's like um, it's like the reflections of the desert zone. It's kind of precise in that way. Um, versus the black is like the interiority of. You know, having your eyes closed in meditation, um, it's like the kind of mysterious, uh, like the caves and things of the witness. Um, so I tend to associate the white with more um, uh, the kind of like hierarchical, logical, scientific viewpoint, and the black of that black and white uh, duality um, with the meditative. But it's hard to say. It's kind of of suns. Uh, ah, that's gonna not be happy it's because satisfying. it's purple, so it actually, yeah, um, how is that gonna work? Okay, okay, so we have, initially nobody's happy, but then this guy chooses Ooh, one of cancel. them to okay. cancel out, and then the other two are happy, so there's a kind that's of iterative process that the puzzle has to go through to check if it has been solved. Right, so it disappearing in order to leave just the satisfied rules. So okay. we've got an even number of uh, greens and an odd number of oranges, so we're of course going to give the odd number to be cancelled out. Um, here we have an odd number of purples, including this guy, and and an odd number of oranges. How are we going to do this one? Oh, because... Let's see, so if we give ourselves three and three, all right, that's good. So it, it'll choose to cancel an orange, and then the uh, uh, yeah, satisfied, purple can go satisfied. Away. Yeah. Um, and then this one was a very tricky one, where there's, if you just split these up the normal way, or not split them up at all, then everyone's happy. Which um, is a problem. Which is a problem, because <laughs> these guys demand imperfection. <laughs> um, so uh, they will not be satisfied until they are unsatisfied. Um, so the trick here is to create like a horrific nightmare solution involving what like each one has to, to be to paired with the opposite colors yes. so that it'll just cancel out and there'll be no symbols Two left canceled. on the board. Yep. Um, That's a fun one. Yeah, so here how many do we have? Uh, how the hell is this going to work? Three, two, two, two. No, this has got to be... You're yeah, close. we gotta yeah. okay. We gotta give four to this initial one so it can pull that Three. same deleting yeah. one and then leaving yeah. two happy. And then you can do like a little zigzag. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, right here. Mm. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Nice. Um, and then some variety of that same trick, except the exit is now on another plane, and I bet we have to solve it in some totally different way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, right, oh, okay. This can be our PB. Um, and we come on here. Okay, right, and then we get the four on that side. Okay, yeah. Right. Just There's an interesting it. connection between these two puzzles, which I will not take time <laughs> to understand. Um, <laughs> We can get the four here, and then the three, and oh, but we got to separate uh, these fellas. Nice. Four and the three again, except this time there's a perfectly happy number of purples, so we Just instead have to the four, right? To so satisfy. Cancel the three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, wait, except we gotta. Yeah, no, go across and then split the. Two. Oh, of yeah. course. Of course. We're just parading Lots through this logic. I mean, one of the reasons why I didn't do this in the earlier episodes of Examining the Witness is because the logic areas have a lot more puzzles than the um, environmental areas, and so they take a little longer. But I trust if you guys are not interested in the minutia of the puzzle details, you can always use the YouTube highlights um, in order to skip around and find your favorite sections. Obviously the same thing is not just going to work again. No. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, maybe we'll just let him take out that purple. Yeah. Okay, and now some kind of confusing master combo. Uh, no. Well, those purples are fine, so now maybe cancel one of the shapes? Yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. Just, uh, uh, wait, I can't see it. Never mind. Uh, yes, just do a six in the middle so that the top three gets canceled. Yes. But we've yes. got to get the rest of the purples, though. The purples no, you don't. Oh. Uh, can you split them up by. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Just, yeah, okay. Just I like think that. a six is good. And then up. Yes. Nice, nice, nice. Good. All right. Um, so now, now this is a very funny sequence. Okay, so it's kind of natural to finish this and turn over here and see this puzzle as the final. Actually, this one has already powered this string, which is going to wander all the way over there um, and connect to the, the lantern up on top of the quarry. Um, but we come to this final, final puzzle, yeah. which... Uh, you know, at the end of all this, like, what is the significance of this? And it's then you a big put deal, it, obviously. and it just, it just moves the dang mechanism. Or wait, how do we actually? You need to come in from the side. Do this, yeah. yeah we got to leave one of them unconnected, and it. Uh, there it is. It it's just, moving. It back. moves this thing. <laughs> like, what is this? You know, there's all these other ones, and they don't move. Um, Maybe my wife had yeah, a yeah, yeah. fun so, experience with so this. So I, I was looking at this, and I was just, like, driving myself crazy. Um, because I was like, okay, at, maybe, maybe because it was placed at the very end, or maybe just because the witness, like, does everything uh, for a reason. Um, and so I was just like, oh, like, this is going to be useful in some way. So I was, like, running over there. Uh, apparently, Jackson tells me I was literally trying to figure out how I could move the logs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I probably thought it was, like, some cool animation. Because, like, look at all this stuff, right? Yeah. Like, it's so mechanical. Like, all of these this, this, things. This whole zone, are, like, a process. right, is, like, themed after, like, we're taking, like, the pure knowledge of Zen and, like, commodifying it in some way. You know, or, like, it's just getting ground down look, by the objectives of society. I was just and... like, this is cool, right? Like, there's a lot of cool stuff. Like, I don't know. Like, I... I was just looking. I didn't know like all the symbolism when I was playing this, um, so I, I just I wasn't thinking that this was a special area signifying anything. 
Um, but I, I was just like driven crazy. But like this is going to be useful in some way. All of the ramps, they're all useful. They all help me get places. Like this is going to be useful somehow. Um, so I'm running up and down. I'm moving back and forth. I'm like looking at stuff. Go ahead and move that ramp if you would. Yeah. sniping. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that one didn't even move it. No, you gotta be over here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be the far one. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, I'm, so I like make this connection like, oh look at all these bits and pieces that move. Like, let me move something else over there. Maybe that will be important. And again, like maybe something to do with logs, maybe some animation, like maybe some panel I don't know. Um, go ahead and run down there. Because I'm literally standing on it, like, running up and down. Um, <laughs> so sorry for making such a big deal of this, but the, the thing that was important to me is I'm, like, looking at this, like, what does this do for me? Like, I've lined it up with logs, yeah. but nothing is moving, nothing is yeah, happening. I don't not see grabbing, anything. Not successfully like, grabbing what any can logs. I possibly do? So finally I look at it, and I'm like, okay, Weird, this, it makes, this a makes for me a circle and a line. Like, that's cute. Um, but like, does that do anything for me? And so finally, I just freaking click on it, and I'm like, what? Like, this is what happens? Like, this? What the? All right, I guess that's. Yep. Why would you put this in the game? I don't know. So that was my first environmental puzzle. That, like, this obsessive, like, trying to figure out, like, what does this mean? What's got, like, this must have a purpose. This, like, everything in the wind is, does something that's, like, relevant. Yep. That's how I found the environmental puzzles. Um, yeah. So, I think, I, I mean, was a little nonplussed after this. And then... Yeah, you thought it was just, like, a one-off. Yeah, like, I was like, this is weird. Before you realized that actually the <laughs> whole game is, is about strange. this, right? Yeah. Whereas <laughs> I, as I described in the Symmetry episode, had this totally different experience where I, like, got the the uh, puzzle that you see looking across the water through the transparent panels where the where the paths are disappearing in the glass Much and like more saw it than this. and I was like wow like <laughs> this is going to be a really good game like all the thematic connotations <laughs> kind of like flowed through me I was like well I mean not not like I understood what they were all about but I was just like whoa um and like something um, else is going on here this is like meaningful yeah whereas for me I thought this was dumb um, yeah so this is interesting as one of the more um it's it's like one of the most mechanically based puzzles in the witness um and i think it forms a kind of fitting end of a sort to this hyper logic based anti-environmental puzzle style area because this i think this is designed for the person right this zone you can only complete this if you've com if you've completed and understood all of the other mechanics of the like syntax based logic puzzles um so the person who's going to be like arriving at that panel up there has just has like mastered everywhere else on the island but maybe they haven't like figured out the reflections in the desert or the shady trees or even like the pink trees of the tutorial area um and um so they uh I mean, you know, you're gonna go through here, you're like figuring stuff out, you know, all of these previous mechanisms have a purpose and the game is training you like, hey, there's a reason why, you know, it helps you progress further. Um, and um, and so I think this is kind of designed as a, a clue precisely so that people, when they see this wandering back and forth, they're gonna be like, what the hell? Um, and then be able to kind of mechanics their way into yeah, finding in this. Fact, I, where yeah, if I they saw it. something, you know, even the most conspicuous design elsewhere in the game uh, would, would miss out on it. So I think this is an interesting kind of hook into getting people yeah. to notice the environmental puzzles, which is themed for, like I said, I was joking earlier that this is like the most autistic area of The Witness, right? Like, this is like a way to get those people who are like just working on the puzzles and aren't able to figure out the like, you know, kind of, more like broad awareness like noticing the surrounding environment areas into noticing the environmental puzzles just like how the there's up on the mountain there's like that little survey um 
uh, the like survey panel which traces out the path made by the river that's like for that's many people's first puzzle because it's like the most blatant it's like okay I guess you really didn't get it here's the survey panel this is a different tutorial for people who are like super intense on logicking it out but aren't that great on like you know noticing the details in the environment let me go ahead and defend myself a little sure. bit. <laughs> uh, I had not been up the mountain but also I think one of the, the kind of nice things about it is like the, the puzzle wasn't perfectly formed when I was like lining these things up. I didn't just like notice it. I was like, oh, that's that's interesting. Like one thing this does for me is make this line like maybe if I make it a perfect line and circle. It's because I was engaging with it that I like was paying more attention to it. I also think I had maybe seen some other puzzles, but I just hadn't thought to click on them. And like fully, yeah. Like line maybe, them maybe up. this I is like, just oh, it's nice like, yeah, artistic representing oh, the game cute. and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, after that it was sort of. And then I saw a few more, and it was off to the races. So, yeah. and part of the reason that I was insistent on like trying to figure out what the hell was going on there is like I played the whole game like a little too insistent. Like I would try and complete a whole area. Yeah without uh, having a hard time giving up, going somewhere else, trying to get inspiration elsewhere. So it was part of that drive that got me to do that. And I, yes, I'm sure that's absolutely put in there yep. for me. <laughs> so that's basically this area. Um, and I think, you know, it's a transitional area. It's not my favorite part of the game. Uh, it's, it's kind of an inconspicuous part of the game, literally hidden here in this little valley, gated off by some mechanics that you don't learn until later in a way that few of the other areas are gated off. Um, but I think it reflects the, like, incredible uh, just construction of the game, right? So if you think about, like, the mechanic here, there's, like, this theme of fallibility. This is tied into... A, because it's a weak mechanic, it's like not as good, in my opinion, as the tetrominoes or the separating the different colored tiles or even the suns, uh, you know, the kind of dual suns that have to be linked together. Um, because it's like a weaker mechanic, it benefits from bringing in the combo of all of the other logic puzzle panels. And then because we're bringing in all of those other logic puzzle panels, this becomes sort of like a logic paradise zone, which is devoted to like, um, you know, just that kind of one-sided sort of scientific, logical, syntactical analysis and not the kind of like openness to sensory experience and internal like introspection. Because you have that, it also works well with this theme of like criticizing the institutions of society, both the old timey, you know, like the ancient Buddhist and, uh, you know, medieval Christian worlds and the kind of modern day like secular industrial capitalist world as like saying like hey our modern society is doing that thing we're sort of just focusing on the things that can be measured we're like abdicating part of our human experience which is to like collaboratively interrogate what it means to be human and what it means to be in the universe and stuff like that so it feeds into like the themes of the area and kind of creates the themes of the area um and of course the but then also the mechanic of the fallibility um, and the and the imperfection also softens that criticism a little bit in an appropriate way by saying, hey, look, you know, these human institutions are fallible, but it's not, that's kind of to be expected, you know, and it's okay. You don't have to be this mathematically perfect super thing. And we're just like the human statues down there. We're like on this process of spiritual development. Um, you know, we haven't gotten to the final stage yet. Um, so just like the fact that all those things come together and that it's spatially, it's cohesive between the, um, <clears throat> you know, the desert temple, which is like that first, like, proto-religious uh, energy, like the light coming through uh, and, you know, doing the environmental puzzles on the, on the factory floor there. Um, and the, um, the castle, which is also kind of even more critical about our society and, like, the distortions and stuff. Although this is more about, like, criticizing just the fact that the institutions are stale and are kind of distracted. Um, the castle is more about psychological drama and like, you know, the fact that people are too wrapped up in their social affairs and things. It's more about like, you yourself have all these class <laughs> obsessions and like arguments and stuff versus this is like, uh, you know, society, like it's good that people are doing business. There's like, 
ships coming in here and getting this stuff they're like exporting wood you know like somebody's got to do this but like this can't be all of it right like the logic puzzles are great but just like this uh you know environmental puzzle at the end is trying to teach you it's like trying to hook us into like there's there's more right. to it than this there's more to it than just paying the bills or you know just doing the group sublime projects of religion or politics or you know uh, those other things um so uh uh, I don't know, I just think it's, it's very beautiful how that all comes together, even in a kind of area that feels like it was penciled in later in the game under the constraints of some of the, uh, some of the other uh, mechanics that had already been worked out. Um, yeah, and it looks good. Um, so anyways, this brings us to the lantern, nicely aligned with the sun, as so many things, there's so many alignments uh, in this game and, you know, architectural configurations. Um, we have this very funny thing at the end of the all, almost all the other areas of the witness, I believe. Um, well, some of them, like in the fortress, you have to kind of solve a puzzle and then it, it opens it. Some you just have a simple, like you know, little key icon to to trigger the the final uh, laser box. Um, but in none of them do you have this totally bizarre, like slowly unlocking puzzle panel. Um, Part of this is to indicate that it's fed by the two halves, the, uh, the kind of like uh, Christian half and the Zen half here. Um, <clears throat> and um, But then the halves don't even cover the board totally. Um, like you can see the center before <clears throat> these panels open. Yeah, this is like really emphasizing the threeness of it all. Um, so yeah, yeah, when these are closed, you can just see, and you can actually draw this, but you then, can, yeah, you can but it'll the fail. Puzzle, but it's wrong. Um, yeah. So it kind of, and this is interesting because you can get up here just by walking here. So it's sort of like a mystery tease, like what the hell is going on? Like this should satisfy, it satisfies the tetrometers, but then like what's up with this yeah, icon? Yeah, what does that mean? Um, yeah. <clears throat> so that's kind of interesting. This is like a three by three panel. You've got a total of three tetromino blocks. You've got this three, three fold symbols. icon. Yeah. You've got this like thing that folds out. It kind of reminds me of a Christian uh, triptych. Maybe we can put a picture of that on board, like the Garden of Earthly Delights or something. These are like fold out paintings where you'd have the like a square painting on the outside, and then you'd have like a you know a, a, a like a square painting on the inside with these like wings when it folds out. Um, <clears throat> so there's really like something about the threeness this is connecting back to like why is this symbol three, it's like the yeah, most arbitrary yeah. thing i feel like this is like the christian trinity or like uh, you know i i don't know exactly um but anyways at the, in the final like reference to kind of imperfection and fallibility first of all these panels don't even fully close over the entire thing um <clears throat> and then sec secondly you're taking this beautiful like three 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 super threeness of everything and you're separating off the one from the two um although maybe this is sort of like a monism thing because you have all these threes and then they go down to just become like the, the one the, the monistic thing they all merge together um so anyways there's our laser and that is our episode i hope you've enjoyed uh, learning more about this area of the witness um and we will be back soon hopefully in less than three years uh <laughs> with explorations of more uh zones so uh yeah thank you for joining us especially if you're coming back from the original episodes um and uh yeah i uh it's great to have you all back <laughs>